there, and Trat Mogwa here coming at you with yet another Legends of Runeterio for you guys today. And today we got the spice as we're bringing back one of the faces of the channel, really, in a deck worth dying for because we're playing the Undying. <laughs> we have an Undying deck that's close to a championless Undying variant that is something that we've showcased on this channel ever since Runeterra has been a thing, right? Ever since the beginning of the game, I've always gravitated towards this. Uh, card right here in case you're wondering my first legends of runeterra gameplay video unless i'm wrong was an undying deck so it is in a way kind of like the signature of what we do here english and we uh, i wanted to bring this back because a lot of you have been asking for the undying i tend to do a new deck with every expansion and the latest one i actually didn't do it right even though i have quite the incentive to try this card out again not because of the new cards within the expansion, but because of the latest balance patch in which we got a four mana crumble. Four mana crumble is the tits. It's actually very underplayed right now in general. This card is really strong and very reliable, and there's a lot of thralls in ladder as of now, even after the nerfs, the deck is still really strong, and this card just loves running into that archetype as it allows you to remove essentially anything that's on the board, you know, a unit or a landmark for just four mana, while also contributing to our own snowball -y tactic with this three drop right here. In case, you know, I don't know, you're like new or, or something and you don't know what this card does, the Undying is a three mana two two that cannot block with a last breath effect of reviving itself at the next round start and granting itself plus one plus one for each time it has died. So the more you kill the Undying, the stronger it becomes. And we are aiming to essentially beat down the opponent with some big ass Undyings and rally effects that we can gener generate <laughs> generate <laughs> that's that's spanish because <laughs> because in spanish we don't like you know the g we like uh, it, it, you get what i'm saying <laughs> i'm kind of like drifting here we got angry woman tiana crown guard to rally for us and we have the ether fiend this is another card uh, obviously the thumbnail because the art for this card is just absolutely spectacular and the card that i've been wanting to showcase on the channel for uh, quite some time like ever since it, it got printed like i never really showcased it on the channel before because it was deemed pretty much unplayable and honestly i think it's quite underrated at least in an undying deck it puts in the work it's essentially a seven mana six four with fearsome that comes down and kills a unit right no matter how big it is it just dies and as well we still get to promote our you know our own proactive game plan by killing the undying which is what we want to be doing so how do we play a deck that revolves around one card alone and how do we enable some sort of consistency out of that right because that is a bit of an issue in card games like when your entire strategy revolves around one card and you don't draw it that's a problem right so we have a full set of stalking shadows our follower you know density in the deck is actually relatively high we have 23 out of 40 cards being followers so stalking shadows is going to hit a target the vast majority of the time and it allows us to pick up the undying we can also pick up an undying and generate an ephemeral copy of it with a draw effect which we can play and it will do its job of dying for us which is really neat we're also mixing the undying with the grand plaza because every time the undying comes back onto the board it is summoned again and therefore it gains challenge of that round and we can make use of the body not only for offensive or purely offensive purposes but also for controlling the board and making use of a stat line that can't really help us in the defensive turns so that is why we're playing two copies of the grand plaza not really three because we're not really an ephemeral deck it, it, this card does do a lot for the deck and it helps us out but we don't really be drawing three copies of it essentially which is why we drop down to two as our champion of choice we're playing lucian instead of going full on in with uh, just followers and enhancing our stalking shadows which would be nice i do think lucian warrants a slot in the deck he's not that hard to level up especially you know with a one-off a cheeky one-off of center right here lucian is really key because it helps us rally and rallying with the undying is exactly what you want to be doing and we synergize a lot with lucian uh, not an straight up super easy to level way of leveling him up unless we find senna but gradually we can build towards that and uh, we can give our opponent an extra target to uh, worry about so i figured that was good enough also lucian is pretty good with the grand plaza as well because quick attack with challenger equals profit so well, we take those points there, too. We got Curse Keepers and Wings in the Wave, you know, a bunch of uh, Last Breath fodder to kind of, like, help us synergize in case we don't have the Undying in our hand yet. 
And then we got some card draw as well with the Goons Beyond and a couple of copies of Spirit Leech. Not going full set with Spirit Leech because we also want to be running Chronicle of Ruin. And we're already running a full set of Stalking Shadows. So we've got all the card draw we need. We do not run out of gas with this deck. The way we lose with this deck is we get over whelmed really like we just get swarmed and uh we don't really get what we need and we get trampled right like not finding the undying is something that hurts this deck a lot keep that in mind if you're going to be using this for climbing like there will be some games in which you will just fall flat on your face because the deck really needs this guy right and sometimes it's just not gonna happen no matter how much you aggressively mulligan and how many stalking shadows you play you just you just get off it you know and you just got to move on and play another game. That's how it goes. It is definitely worth the payoff, though, because there's all these synergies, like Ethereal Remitter and Ether Fiend, uh, getting both of these on curve with an Undying on the board just leads to so much value. Uh, Ethereal Remitter, especially with a Grand Plaza on board, and it's just such a fun deck that because of these like random spawns and such, it never truly plays the same. And it feels extremely rewarding, especially against more reactive decks. Like, for example, Annie Twist of Fate or something like that uh, can struggle because they don't really want to be killing your Undying. And uh, you have a unit that essentially can never die, right? And uh, they're ravenous flocks and the disintegrates, all that. We welcome it, which is, uh, you know, pretty neat. And I just really wanted to showcase the new Crumble as well, outside of the, uh, the Tailstones package that we see. Uh, through Twisted Fate and Nami, right? I feel like Crumble is good enough to be played on its own, and it's definitely the ideal deck for it. And that's where I'm going to stop rambling. There are options that you can go for, depending on what uh, to uh, optimize the list, like depending on what you're running into. If you're running into a lot of aggro, I suggest you look into uh, adding uh, copies of Absorb Soul into your deck. Uh, this card is actually really, really good in those matchups, and you can take away, away a little bit of your high-end power for it. Uh, I like two Tiana because I really, really like to rally on eight, but you, know, you can definitely go without that and just run one, especially considering that you're playing Stalking Shadows, but you got to be careful and not have your follower count be too low so that this card starts becoming a liability, right? Uh, there's other options. You can go without Lucian and try to incorporate more followers to enhance the, this thing's consistency and have a bit of an early game with, with more uh, fodder to, uh, you know lessen your reliance on the undying but right now this is the the version that i found uh, success with and i had fun with which is really ultimately what matters i think you guys are going to enjoy this deck and the games that i got for today and i'm going to stop talking because i'm talking way too much man i gotta, I gotta stop talking so yeah love you have a solid day thank you guys for watching stay tuned for daily legends of Frontier content hope you enjoy the games i'll see you guys tomorrow all right here we go well, we're facing thralls. We do have a triple crumble lineup, though. Which I do want to relatively... I do want to mulligan for. I mean, Grand Plaza is good. But the Undying is what we really want to see. Now we have a very neat curve because of it. Interesting. Push back the darkness. Push back the darkness. Damage here. What will you have? All right. Hot suit man is here. Okay. This one's on the house. We're gonna take the hit. Now we're just gonna glimpse. Oh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good indeed. Alright. Bit in, bit in. <laughs> no thrall, dude, that much suck. I just want to make sure that I have a, a fail safe. 
against uh, against an avalanche. But definitely looking like our opponent just cannot cannot find the thralls, man. Return. That's pretty all right. Man, Grand Plaza with Undyne just feels good. I want to level up. Lucian. We're going to need more coffins. <laughs> oh, that was a bit dirty. Put to rest. Yeah. I guess it's thrall. It's bad. I guess it's thralls day. Put the tongue twister right there. Where keep the crumble? I really want to find the undying. Like the undying makes a huge difference having. Being able to snowball with it. We got double crumble for their thralls this time around. No turn one thrall, but there could easily be a turn two thrall. Hit. Let's see if this uh, one off of Stalking Shadows can. Ephemeral one, cause it dies. Yeah, and we want our undying to die. And now that we got this in, work. there's still no promising future or anything like that that we have to worry about immediately. So we're just gonna drop you. Now we kill the Undying with the last wind, allowing us to resurrect it. And I want to have my op my option to crumble here. Even though Ethereum Emitter will be really good here, I really, really, really. Allowed to keep growing. Come on, there's so much to see. One night. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. off here even if they have the uh, the sentry card 
the uh, the winds of the century. What was the name of the card? I forgot. Well, the six mana one that reduces everything. Even though they do have that, we still kill Talia. And right now, I don't feel the need to commit a crumble. I don't know if they play Promising Future. It seems like that's not the case. So I'm just gonna crumble one of these preemptively. That's gonna die anyways. Okay. We got single combat that allows us to trade into. Okay, so they're playing. They're playing clock hand here. All right. All right. I kind of want to do this. Sacrifice for the freedom. Not quite what we wanted, but <laughs> it will be enough to block into these. Nani. This back, we can play Ethel Remitter onto you. We have you here. Let's pass for now. Okay, that that makes things interesting. What's my best plan here? We just need to make sure we stay alive. We need to make sure we can trade into their units. Is it better to kill you a five-five? To get something potentially bigger, or is it better to play you? I mean, let's no matter what, let's lead off with you. <clears throat> I see myself resorting to this second undying here. I can at least straight into that. Return. That's two or three sisters, though. They could have another one to entomb, but they still don't technically kill me, and I have I have this Tiana here. <clears throat> this is really intense, though. Okay. It's fine. So we're going in regardless. We strike now. Now, motherfucker! <laughs> I got him. Back to back, let's go. Superior tactics, iron. Ah. All right, we break free from the thralls as we face Shivana Jarvan with no really soul, Nani. We're always gonna form Mulligan for the Undying. Grand Plaza is also good to draw. We 
love to see the Undying here. Especially because double Grand Plaza is a bit eh. Don't get in my way. Don't get in my way. No room for doubt. Yeah, Sharp Side doesn't punish this with this attack anymore, but ever since the nerf. Never again will we fall to They're the actually fire. playing the Dragging Iron Lieutenant. Like I, I wasn't sure that was the case, but it's it's happening. Alright. Prepare for battle! I kind of got for the Gullus but I want those two to trade, and I really gotta believe in the heart of the cards. A playable unit. Don't force me through Spirit Leech, please. Smoke, ash, and dragon fire. Oh boy, it's happening. Atta boy! No turn four dragon? No Shivana? Oh! Oh, nice! Okay, alright. I can always just... I have a lot of draw, but I, I do have plays for the next few turns. I'm gonna play Ravenous Butcher instead of going for the card draw. I just have a... A blocker, you know? Blockers are nice. In my opinion, to be honest, just saying the Ether Fiend can really shine in this kind of matchup. I think maybe now, instead of going for the Ether Remitter, we go for you instead. Because this trades into you. But obviously, we can switch it around. No reinforcement. Six four. Let's see. Spare Leech putting it to work there, trading with that. Getting us some massive value here. Okay, so we could just dive this into this. What do we do afterwards? I mean, I, I like the idea of developing you. But then the problem with that line of play is that we're left pretty wide open to a hit next round. We are working for Lucian's level up though. How risky is this? In comparison to like, cause e the thing about Ethel Remitter here, nah, I think we're gonna go with this. There's a chill in the air. We're gonna go with a chill in the air. Purity and peace. That is perfectly okay. here. It can't be countered by a civil combat. I could play another Undying and use it on that, but I'd rather take this approach. Now we can develop this. And this way. Got several options here, actually. I throw a middle fits quite nicely. Monsters with heart are still monsters. This is a really good other fiend, though. Unless they have a single combat, in which case they do, they have to trade with this, yeah. <laughs> that is so sick. It took me way too long to play this card, man. Way too long. Like, it was designed for the Undying. 
Like, it's actually really solid if, if you factor in the Undyne on curve. Like, it's just a seven drop that kills something. It's amazing. Like, it's actually not bad. Like, no joke. Tier one. Okay. Talk about throwback. All right. Regular knife fall. Well, we do what we usually do. Full mulligan. We find Grand Plaza, which is always nice to see early on. But it will be nicer when we see that Undying Stalky Shadows opens up an opportunity for that. That's why we have it as a one-off, because we can take a look at the four top uh, cards. And if we see the Undying there, we even get an ephemeral version. That does its job of dying for us. Okay, another card that wants the Undying. <laughs> Is the one true light. I'll take our time. Just so that it they... <laughs> What are you gonna do? That was a bit of an expensive undying, but hopefully it is worth. There's a chill in the air.
one life. Gotta go with this. We gotta go all in. Got him! Got him, baby! Let's go! Oh, <laughs> yes! Oh. <laughs> oh! Yeah! All right, discard aggro. Target edition. Full mulligan. Undying. Come to me. English. They even got the the annoying elephant. Night flower. Jumps around the entire board. Fantastic. I'll trade illusion into that. Don't duck on my account. Since we got no better plays here on Dying Top Deck, would be nice. Damn. Don't get in my way. Nobody's in your way, man. We're in our own way. The heat. With these draws, bro. Ah. I mean, this deck, sometimes, you know, believe it or not, it's not going to find the Undying, but we do find you, however. You're early. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but we gotta piss off your husband because we are in a pickle and we keep drawing. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Perhaps a bit late though. <laughs> I don't know. Burn away the shadows. That's fair. Well, at least we clear that. They forced us to choose death or the blade. That that really sucks. I feel really sorry for you, girl. But what are you gonna do? And a butcher to rally once again. Bro, this the winding light here. Shut up when I can. Is going to obliterate us. Is there any reason why I would single combat or do it? No, I just gotta. I have so combat with the Undying next round, anyways. And there's nothing that I can do with that so combat that allows me to do a two for one trade. I kinda wanna deal with you though. But I mean, what's. Realistically, what's the point? I mean, it's gonna take one body out, right? But we don't even have access to you next round. I don't know how we do this. I don't know how we survive a winding light. We, we got too slow of a start, and they never kept coming at us. Or never stopped coming at us. Yeah. Hacker every time. That's going to completely obliterate us. And there's just nothing we can do about it. <laughs> like, no chance whatsoever. Alright. It doesn't look like a great matchup, to be honest. Alright. Feels good to face a control deck, actually. You know what we need? Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, my god. Sometimes the full mulligan doesn't quite work out. Oh, God. Our greed is showing. Full color. This is a problem. Maybe I should have kept the Stalking Shadows. Maybe it's an argument to always keep the Stalking Shadows. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Never mind. I learned nothing! If they go for like, what would be hilarious would be for them to go for the, uh, the Surge, right? Forgot the name of the entire name of the card. The... Something something Surge. I kind of want to single combat this thing. Why not? Like, what's gonna happen? What are they gonna do? They're gonna Mystic Shot us? That's great for them to use their Mystic Shot on my on my Undying. Well, we got rallies for days, so we definitely need this to build up. Alright, they do go for it. Feels bad having to go for a Mystic Shot. On an Undying. Also makes it so that they don't play a 6 mana play next turn. So we slow them down significantly, which is what we want. Sentinels of light don't fear the dark. Not my problem that we just drew into a great unit to attack with here. That also still enables the Galinsby on play. While giving us a blocker. We're also representing quite a bit of damage here. That Mystic Shot that they just wasted. Well, wasted. Can't really say it was a waste. Oh! <laughs> Sentinels. That's uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, we're ready to glimpse into the beyond. I think I like you better, keeping my Civil Combat uh, option open, which allows me to trade the Undying into either Heimerdinger or Jace. Both champions die. Well, that that uh, Mystic Shot right there, yeah, no, we're taking that hit. Don't get in my way. Don't get in my way. Drop that Heimer. What's the worst that could happen? I've already shown one Civil Combat. What are the odds of me having another one? I use that thought process a lot, so hopefully my opponents do too. That'd be ideal. Okay. They're main decking Aftershock. <laughs> That's a pretty good pull. I mean, I've seen better, but I'll take it. It's a good stat line. We still have the Sail Combat to, to kill either of their champions. They take the hit, which I believe is a mistake. I could have always still in combat to prevent the growth for the hex second hander, but I don't think I think we can just hold on to this instead. I like Chronicler of Ruin getting me more more. I mean, Chronicler of Ruin with Tyana as well, though. Like that just means that I rally every day. <laughs> like I'm gonna rally and rally and then rally some more. It's an awesome day for progress. But I feel like just uh, spreading out with these is better. It's getting more on dyings in there. Still have the ability to crumble. Can be countered by a Mystic Shot though. It's just important to know. Maybe that's worth us. You're taking that much damage. I mean, I guess this deck is not like. Well, that's definitely, it's definitely time for a... Uh, I want to keep the Seal Combat option open. So we're gonna crumble instead. So then that we're just, you know, chill and happy, having a great time. 
And now my army is ready. And we got rally, rally. Watch your toes. I hate traffic. That block makes the most sense. Well, they see the angry woman coming. Nobody ever does. Here we go. You're done. Stop playing jump blockers. It's annoying. <laughs> Stop! That's why I wanted to get the single combo because now with not only with this, but also just Tiana's just massive body. Angry woman! Spreading the agar! Is that a vengeance? Is that a vengeance I sense? Nani. Well, so combat does not get us lethal, so. <laughs> okay. I could use so combat to push. But it's a very, very clutch card that we're gonna find use for, anyways. The question is this round we could go Curse Keeper into Ether Fiend? To then set up a crazy open attack into Rally? That's gonna be very hard for them to stop. While also allowing us to answer whatever threat they develop this round. Because obviously, them playing something like Jace is very dangerous. Jace may warrant me just dropping the other fiend immediately, actually. I know this may seem like a win here, probably is, but I'm playing it super safe. Super duper safe. Yeah. This is the cutting I mean, it would have been lethal anyways. <laughs> I think I played it too safe. But I want to play this card, God damn it! Let me play my other fit. It's a very evil card. I feel like I have to act accordingly. All right. What a deep voice. All right. Got him. Clean. Other fiend voice. When? 